Good day. It's been a while. Why is my bear making so much noise? <laughs> Uh, the realities of boating. So, hello. I know I haven't been on air for a while, and there's a very good explanation. Basically, um, over last year, I spent a lot of it at a permanent mooring at the bottom of the farm. It was to give safety, security, and help me get some things done on the boat and my business and all sorts. I left that mooring at the end of November... And I went back to living on the cut full time and surviving on the cut from having unlimited electricity, unlimited water, a gated community, going from that to living on the cut in the coldest months of the year was extremely difficult. It was quite challenging. And... It all seems a blur now, but I I didn't really know. I wasn't in the space to, to film and put out videos because I think it just took all of my energy just to stay focused on doing my commissions, taking care of the boat, taking care of myself and taking care of Leela. And I also, during this time, got myself uh, a new job. Now, I've had a couple of jobs part time over the years but this one I am training to be a battlefield tour guide for Bosworth Battlefield and I and I can't tell you how excited I am I've gone I've nearly finished my training and if you don't know what I'm talking about the Battle of Bosworth it's about the last battle between Richard III and Henry Tudor this in history it ended the medieval period as we know it, and it started the Tudor dynasty. It had, uh, you know, Henry Tudor one, and then he, his son, Henry the Eighth, and his six wives, and his daughter Elizabeth I. It's this this amazing storyline. However, Richard III, I've been fascinated with him since since I was a child, really, because we would go around Bosworth when I was little. And I was so convinced I'd be able to find a sword in the mud and retracing the fields and imagining the soldiers trekking through and just being very fantastically minded and hoping that there was a dimension to, to go back in time to witness the medieval era. Although, me being an adult now, I think it would be bloody awful unless you have a return ticket back to the modern day. So, I love my new job. I get to talk about history to um, groups of tourists, the public, and kids from all the way from little school to people studying their A-levels. And it's wonderful to try to plant the seed for the love of history in someone. And I get to work with weapons. I get to work with swords and bows and arrows and pikes and spears. And it's very fascinating and I there's a museum on site as well so I get to go um and have a look around the museum on my break so it's it's truly my favorite job I've ever had really so um that's what I've been doing um just been trying to survive on the boat which like I say in winter was difficult because I had damaged batteries I had damaged this but I want to tell you now, I now have a new set of batteries. I have a new set of batteries and some new solar panels on the roof. So it's made my living experience on the boat so much easier. It's made things more pleasant. So that's what I've been trying to do over the past few months. Because now I'm back on the, the cut full time. God knows I can't afford to go back into a marina again. So it's about whatever money each month I would have spent on a marina to slowly do little improvements on the boat so I can make long-term living more comfortable. And I have been writing for this history book. I have three weeks until it needs to be delivered. And I am very, very nervous. I've still got a lot to do, 
But during this process of, of searching for the lost history of women on the waterways and comparing it to my own living experience now, I got to go to the Birmingham archives to retrace the first notes, the first registrar of Maggie slash Melvin's existence. I got to go to the archives to see these documents that hadn't se been seen for God knows when. And I'm going to be sharing more about that process very soon. But I, I found her, basically. I found her records. I found the first captain. I found the family. And I've had past owners of my boat contact me and it's been it's been really really awesome getting to chat to them about it and one of the past owners said to me oh would you like the past survey from 2019 and i was like oh yeah thank you that'd be really awesome now i bought uh maggie from uh, a close friend of mine and i don't know what he um did on the boat when he bought her all i was I was reassured that the hull was fine and I'm like, well, if it's not fine, then I'll take it out and I'll, I'll, I'll do the work because she's a historical boat and I know that they need, um, care, time and money put into them. And it, as long as two years ago, it wasn't a today job there and then I could deal with it in two years time, two years has passed and this survey has been brought up to my attention and my friend, he's, He's enjoying himself. He's moved away and I'm I'm not intending to bother him or anything. I want him to be happy and he had a, a great life on, on Maggie and I have learned a lot on her. I've absolutely learned a lot on her. I looked at the past survey. It was on about overplating the boat, which would come to a lot of money basically and that was from 2019 i think it was around about um 12 grand or something like that i can't remember if anyone wants to know i'll send you the survey so you can have a look yourself but i sent the survey off to a few welders uh so and it showed that the original hull is all there it's just been overplated so i was talking to um a couple of welders that have done historic boats in the past and they suggested uh instead of cutting away parts of the boat how about we restore the original hull we restore the pitting of the hull because that's what it is it's pitting in some places and that's the route that i want to go down it does mean that i now have to save a lot of money now which in the cost of the living crisis is a bloody nightmare with the the height prices of the canal and river trust foods absolutely anything um it has become a challenge it's a challenge to keep just keep your neck above water um but i am doing my best um and that's all that you can do really but what i did think about doing was i usually do commissions and I did do prints a few years ago, uh, but most of them were sailing themes. And I thought, I haven't released a narrowboat theme. I haven't ever painted a narrowboat painting. So I painted this. This is, where is the original? Actually, this is a print. God. This is the original. I painted this to represent, this was my first mooring on Maggie and it was in spring and I was so full of hope. I had long red hair, I was wearing dresses every day, I had flowers in almost every single room and I was like, oh, I'm going to have so many adventures now, it's going to be so free and blah, 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 blah. And then reality hit of what it was like to live on a boat this size. Now, I've been boating for seven years now, seven and a half years, and I can I can absolutely say it's been one of the most rewarding in terms of growing as a person, resilience, 
definitely maintaining a sense of humour. You you couldn't live on this boat unless you have a good sense of humour. And it's it's surprising the things that you you put things into perspective and like, is this really a big deal or am I annoyed? And you're able to dissociate yourself from anger a lot of the times when you're annoyed because you know that you're the only one on the boat and you have to do the job as awful as it is. So I decided to release a set of prints to go towards the improvement of um, Maggie and I made it available in two sizes. You got this one, you got this one. And if the, the print is on high, high quality watercolor paper, they have the same texture as the original. Um, and I, I paid a lot of money for these prints because I wanted the, the quality to be amazing. And I don't know if it's difficult to see, but they are just spot on. And then on top of that, as well as doing my commissions, one of my favourite things to do is reading books. You know how much of a nerd I am with writing and reading. And I used to just get books on Kindle, but recently, the past year or so, I've been buying hardbacks and paperbacks, really enjoying them. And I made myself um, a bookmark, so I don't like folding the pages down. And then... I made one for a member of family and friends and then I decided to make a whole bunch of them. Um, these are Wildflowers of the Waterways. They're hand-painted watercolours. They're nice and thick so they're not, they're very very sturdy in your book and they're finished with gold leaf as well. So they're not going to get destroyed and they're available if you would like one i'm going to put a link to everything that i'm talking about in the description and basically my goal is to restore the hull and everything else basically she's going to get a whole a whole facelift inside internally she's going to be repainted we're going to redo the kitchen redo the bathroom because the the bathtub is still bloody split and i'm fed up with washing like an 1800s peasant i'm feeling hopeful i don't know how it's going to go i don't i don't know if i'm going to succeed at the start of the year in January, I was really, really panicking if this was going to work or not. How, how, how could I raise this money to restore the boat? Because, you know, you're always scared of her just sinking. You're like, oh. So all my plans for leaving um, the county I'm in, Warwickshire, kind of got went out the window until the hall sorted because I thought I, I'm not going to take any sort of precarious or risky routes until the hull is sorted and one of the things we have an historical boat I don't feel any negativity about me doing this or having it being a surprise I knew she was going to have to have work done so the number that I had in my head I, to prepare her to do her hull I wasn't far off the number that I was I, I discovered so it is a privilege for me to be the caretaker of this boat and you see so many boats that are so old and have worked through the second world war and they're just left to rust and sink and be forgotten about and disused disloved uh, and unloved but i live on her and she's my home and i'm really really determined to prolong her uh, longevity once again, I don't know if I'll succeed this summer. I have no idea. But I've I've just taken the strain off. If I don't succeed this year, then there's next year. All I can do is the most to my ability. I mean, who who has a, a twelve a, a spare twelve grand in their bank account? No one does. You have to, you know, put in more hours and that's what I'm doing. I've been working every scrap of time that I 
have and I really have just been trying my best and I woke up this morning and I went for a walk down the canal and I thought I've been feeling really frustrated and a bit lost and a little bit hopeless at times like the hope has been dying in me and I just thought you're gonna have to make the best out of this you can make her into a beautiful home you just have to look at it with a brand new perspective act as if this is the first day that you had her because when you first moved on her you were so full of these hopes and dreams and you can recreate that you can do that but the, the best thing is that you have this knowledge you have this experience now there's going to be no surprises because you're prepared for that so I am hopeful again and I'm going to do the best I can and that's all I can do going forwards um, I'm going to be sharing, you know how much I love history. Uh, I'm going to be sharing more about like writing this book, but also I want to be an absolute nerd and share more about what I do down the battlefield and talk about the weapons and what happened and give you all the medieval goss. There's people looking inside my windows. Yes, I'm here at my bloody desk. It's a bit rude, isn't it? People peering inside your windows. Yeah, I am here. I'm going to find out where you live and poke through your windows and see what you're watching on telly. Okay. But I want to share some medieval gossip and I want to share just what we do and the really exciting historical parts of the battlefield. Um, and give me my theories on Richard versus Henry Tudor. If, if you don't know what I'm talking about with Richard and Henry, that's absolutely fine. I'm here to tell you. And if you have any spare time, there's a great documentary that you should watch called The King in the Car Park. That's one of the reasons why Henry III is so fascinating because his body was discovered in 2012 beneath a car park in Leicester. I remember where I was standing in a bar, working behind the bar in Norwich in 2012 when that newspaper was plonked in front of me. I squealed when I saw it. And it's, I think that last battle, that entire palaver with Richard III, the difference between that period with these people compared to everyone else in history the people that I've spoken to, like the archaeologists who specialise in the medieval period or the people working at the museum, of course, because they love that period, but it's as if it just happened yesterday. It's like it's just happened recently because everyone gets so impassioned about it. And I have to admit that I've, I've fallen into the craze myself. I'm like, I don't know who to support, which is the third or Henry Tudor. I, I don't know. They both sound like buggers. There you go. To wrap it up, butt marks and I post worldwide or you can have a mini print or a standard size print. I'm still offering commissions so if you would like a family member painted, pet portrait, your boat portrait, uh, painted, just let me know and if you're interested in uh, knowing what's happening with me or anything else, I um, have I put a blog out on Patreon that is very, very honest, very, very raw. Um, it's basically stuff that I wouldn't want my mum to, to read because I don't want her to worry about me, basically. And, yeah, you can read it on Patreon. But thank you so much. I'm going to give you lots of love from Leela down here. I'm stroking her head now. She don't care. And lots of love from me. And thank you for being so patient. I'm back. And all will be well. And I hope you're well. Ah, all the best. I met my love by the gasworks wall. Dream the dream by the old canal. I kiss my girl by the factory wall. To your town 
Dr. Yotam.